I went back and listened, I can help. And I was like, okay, yeah, I haven't deleted them. He told me not. It's, they've been getting top. They don't delete these ones. These ones were good from yesterday. And then we're working on a lot of scientific manipulation and and hiding and lying and the and the and the simple thinking of the simple evolved that think they're intelligent when their intelligence is actually stuff that they're doing that they shouldn't do, but they're not asking if they should do it. They're just trying to circumvent uh, the inevitable. Yeah, it's, that's why the whole thing he's talking about, the whole robot, where we put our essence into a robot so we can trap the essence there, and then all the essence is like on a, you saw the thing with a, a Final Fantasy? with the organic based life form synapses, spirit things going through and just devouring, killing all these people and stuff like that and doing the thing and just absorbing it and turning it into something that's 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 like a disease almost killing through and anger because it's got no place to go because we've just totally screwed up. We've spliced too much, too far, too fast and then tried to contract it. <laughs> Gotten totally in contrast to nature. So you don't have a redisbursement of it. Well they all want to remain human in nature, but they can't handle it. You've you've you set up the components for the spiritual splicing to go more human and less food. And you're throwing off the balance and more or less these animals and these extincts. It's like uh, George Carlin. He's not a good science, and a lot of these people aren't too. It's just actual nature for them to exist and not exist. And it, it is to a degree. If an if a, if a animal becomes too hostile and aggressive, you need to check it because it will overconsume itself into oblivion. Either if there's not a check for the herbivore, you know, they, the way they make the dinosaur thing, you know, the evil velociraptor, the evil T-Rex, and that good, nice brontosaurus. Okay? If that good, nice brontosaurus doesn't have the evil velociraptor and T-Rex to check them, they will eat themselves into oblivion. And they won't be that nice. <laughs> No, <laughs> they'll be sick and angry and this, and they'll evolve into something more, well, start eating themselves. Yeah, they need something in a carnivorous state to help check and balance on it. It's basic Richard Dawkins 101. This is weird. I can't believe I've been connecting to Dawkins here and we're actually getting along. Shut up, Dawkins. <laughs> That's cool. Well, because this other Miko guy is thought he was cool, but he's not. He's trying to be the one to help circumvent this whole thing. Dawkins is getting it. And he's like, holy fuck. This is cool. <laughs> it's not. It's horrible. Oh, shit. We are stupid. You're not as stupid as you think you are, Richard. No, you're actually more intelligent than you thought you are. Hawking, too. Al G. described that to me. There's love in Hawking. I know there is. You just have that little friendly look and that nice and Oh, it's just, and you're evil, man. <laughs> I have, you're like Masala on that thing, on that, and you, the little Miko guy, man. You you pull all this stuff like, oh, I'm the little sweet Japanese guy. <laughs> you're fucking evil little bastard. <laughs> God, you are not nice. I'm not judging you. <laughs> just, just, it's just, I mean, look at all the stuff you're talking about. I mean, it's, it's an abomination. It's like uh, when Masala is sitting there talking to a, uh, Judah, Judah, and Judah's sitting there, and he goes, man, no, some of the guys are down with it, some of the guys are like, you know, they, they would rather fight than, than submit to this tyranny of Rome. He goes, well, tell me, he goes, you wouldn't have me as a friend if I became your little snitch. I mean, I'd be a nutless wonder. The whole reason we were friends is because, you know, I went and killed lions and jackals and almost got injured, and you protected me. The reason why he almost he got injured was protecting Masala. He said, I saved your life. He's like, well, technically, no. And Judah doesn't tell him that. Technically, you were fucking around. I saved you. Got injured in the process. Yeah. Uh huh. Because you're not paying attention to the story. Esther comes up and says, "Don't let this little boy lose his life." You know, she asked Jehovah, "Please don't." Well, because she knew they they were telling the story. Well, this kid tried to get too cocky with killing the jackals, and he had to save him. And then so the other guy pulled him out. That's what happened. It wasn't Masala that saved Judah. It was Judah that saved Masala. He just doesn't say. You don't get the dynamic of the story. You're not listening. He got injured. And the other guy saved him because he was saving the other guy because he was a cocky son of a bitch. Oh, follow the check the technique. 
Yeah, Masala doesn't save Judah. Judah saves him. He's just pulling him back because he was getting cocky and got himself in a vulnerable position, and Judah had to save him. That's what happened. Just follow the, analyze the movie and listen to what the girl was talking about. That's why that's so important with that conversation between him and Esther. You know, I asked God not to let this little boy die because he was special. <laughs> Judah been hers special. He's a good guy. Yeah, he's a, this is a random excess memory. This isn't a, a make-believe story by Lou Wallace. This is a memory of his of, of, of who he once was. This is like uh, Moses sitting down and writing about uh, Jonah and J or Job. Yeah, I know this, yeah, some of the Gospels that Moses is getting credit for. And then they're put in different places in the Gospels. They're like, well, Moses allegedly wrote this. Why is it this point in the Gospels? They're putting it in where it, the Gospels, if you read them, that's why that lady, oh, I'm sorry, Francesca. I was just mad because you were such arrogant pricks. The Gospels don't make as much chronological sense and look like it's just a hodgepodge of stories and stuff like that. Because it's obvious. I mean, any intelligent academic would look at it and go, okay, he took the ones that he could sit, that he thought he could manipulate the masses with the modes, and then he puts in the passages, and he has, the guy, he has this guy translate them, okay? And the translations are really crude at best in certain points because you're operating in a lot of different languages, okay? The one that he tries the best and he works with the most is because they have the Rosetta Stone, is the ones that are written in Egyptian. So Moses is our very core staple and principle of the Gospels because they have them written down and they're translated through certain things through Egyptian, and he, he's got them in both. And so he's like, okay, and it's translated through certain kinds of Hebrew that are, yeah, that was the slaves of this, that. And so he can translate this stuff because they have a, they have a written language and history. Uh, he has a he has a code. He has a code book. He can follow them. So the ones he has a good code book to, he follows. The ones that he doesn't, he doesn't even. He just okay. I can't even make sense or read this one. So he takes all the ones he can make sense of, and then he. You see what I'm saying? This is what's happening with Jerome. Okay. He's he's getting them down. Then he's putting them down, and then he's making an order that makes sense to him. And the Gospels are hard to make sense to anybody because it's the same thing like with the book of Genesis, the book of Revelation, and the book of Daniel. It goes from like back to front order and importance. Uh, Daniel's asking the guy questions. What about this? What about that? And they're having a conversation. He thinks very abstractly, so they don't always follow a certain chronological order. And they're not always applicable to this day and age. They're asking about, what happens to Uncle Joe? <laughs> well, they're, they're, yeah, this is, well, what about the people over here? Well, that's, oh, shit, what about that? That's what's happening, same with Amos. But Amos thinks more chronologically. Hey, Book of Amos, I love. That's what I love. I love Gabe. <laughs> it's the way he works. He goes, well, okay, so how does this work in a sequential sequence so I know what's going on? And then the Book of Amos is like that. And they'll do it again. And they'll do it again. And so he's asking each subsequent house. He's, okay, so this, he just asks, like, from a certain line. Okay, which one the most closely related to me? What happens? And they do it. Oh, shit. And they do it again. And again. And again. And again, and again, he's asking about molecular and reconfigure because he's telling him about it. Now go prophecy to the king and tell him this guy's a liar and you're not. <laughs> and it works because Amos writes the book and it's carried on and stuff like that. So the king recognizes him as the prophet and the Messiah and not this other guy who's passing himself off as it, who's the hereditary line who they lie and steal and cheat and then make them, you know. That's why I have a total, oh, yeah, when I'm watching the movie and Judah ben hers, like when they're all doing, the women are, the, the male and women dancers are dancing around and it's opulent and it's just, wow, it's like going to a Hollywood party. Rome is like that. You're like watching it and the girl that's pretty there with him and she's looking at Judah and he's like, I don't watch this stuff. Why? Well, those women are great bodies and it makes you just really want to just, wow. And he doesn't have a girl and he's trying, and all he wants, all he can think about is, here I am with these women that are dancers, great body, that I can have sex with any of them because I'm the Circus Maximus chariot. He's freaking uh, Jeff Gordon and shit, you know, stuff. And he's like, whoa, you know, I'm, I'm Jeff Gordon or Dell or her junior here. And all these girls are glad, you know what I mean? Uh, well, or he's Tom Brady. He's freaking, you know what I mean? He's Michael Jordan is essentially who he is. That's who Judah is. He's Michael Jordan. And so he's like freaking Michael Jordan. He can have sex with just about any of the girls he wants. 
you know, at least half of the girls there. Not all of them, because some girls are, I'm not really that attracted to Michael Jordan. <laughs> but some, oh my God, that's Michael Jordan. <laughs> I wanna, I'm going to have sex with Michael Jordan. <laughs> that's who Judah Ben-Hur is. And he's not looking because he's thinking, how can I be wondering about who I'm going to have sex? And he has done that. He's told you that. The thing, oh man, you know, this whole time I'm sitting here a couple times, I got lost in the life of Rome and wasn't thinking about it. And then, you know, and I must kill him when he gets back. And he it, it feels like he's been fucking around in Rome and his mom and his sister are stuck in a prison for four years. Beyond well, no light, no this, and they're left. They're turning to the lepers because they're they're not getting the vitamins they need for the sun, and their skin is just deteriorating. It's just horrible. They're not living in nor typical normal evolutionary conditions, and he's having a good old time in Rome, racing chariots and getting laid. He's a fornicator. He's Roman. He's become Roman. Yeah. They don't go into. You can tell because he sits there and tells them, "I gotta go because I feel guilty as shit." And if you see it in that passage, he's not looking anymore because he started to get guilt and he's felt, "Oh my God, I've been here. Those women, I've partaken of that, and they're hot. <laughs> and I'm here with this woman, and he hasn't had sex with her because she's a lady. You don't have sex with a lady unless you marry her. Okay, so they're they're friends, but he's had sex with the the dancers. <laughs> it's like on a Coming to America, you haven't had sex with the bathers? <laughs> oh, sure, but I want a woman that, you know, well, we've got a queen prepared for you that's a lady. <laughs> you know, well, and come inside here. Okay, jump up and down on one leg. Bark like a dog. No, <laughs> I want a woman that's going to tell me, fuck you. <laughs> cool. I'm not going to bark like a dog, and I'm not going to jump up and down on one leg. Think of something intelligent to discuss with me. And then maybe we'll have sex. But until then, no, sleep over here and sleep in your room and fuck your bathers. I'd rather not sleep with you. I think you're a fucking idiot. I love you too. <laughs> she loves everybody. She just doesn't like you because you're a fucking moron. She, divorce. That's what he was. Oh, this is interesting. That wasn't. Yeah, this is the name of this one. Was divorce. He goes, go back there and explain to him. D i v o r c e. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, the the. The not proper, the sorrow divorce, the not proper fit and mix because of deeds and heart. You need a woman of a proper heart and deed to share with you into this new, you know. So they're jealous and envious, but they get stuck with the person that was more in deed and ability and stuff like that. That's what it is. They try to get into, yeah, I want to have kids with David because I want him to have David's talents but you haven't earned it. Well, then how will our kids ever catch up with your kids? How will our kids ever evolve into by earning them? How is that going to happen? It's going to take forever to catch up. It doesn't take as much time as you think. It's that whole uh, scientific study thing about that. that our, actual deeds, our actual deeds helps our DNA, yes, become more loving and more caring and more intelligent just by our actions. Cereal. Cereal. So you can become a similar living, but you'll find a bet like Amy can tell me, you're not the right one for me. Not someone else. I always knew, okay, it's this famous woman somewhere. <laughs> famous. What the fuck is famous? Fuck famous. I get, <laughs> but then I watch those stupid video feeds and I hate you guys. <laughs> it, I think it's her. I don't want to think it's her. All right, well, because she makes me mad. <laughs> Well, because I think she knows who I was before all this shit happened, and she dogged me, yo, and I'm pissed. <laughs> That's, I'm mad. I'm not vindictive. I'm just pissed. You know me. I'll get over it in 15 fucking minutes. But I'm mad that I'll get over it in 15 fucking minutes. Well, because I get treated like shit for three fucking years, and I'm over it in 15 fucking minutes. I'm such a fucking schmuck. <laughs> Sorry. I know it's not her fault. I know she hangs out with a bunch of assholes and and, and she's caught in the middle of the whole banking. She's caught in the middle of the... She's worse stuck in it than I... I knew this, and I know this, and I'm not being mean, and I'm sorry. And No, I'm not going to say it publicly. No, because I'm tired of looking like a stupid schmuck who thinks that he's in love with some kind of super diva when she's just a regular person just like me. I'm obviously not a regular person, and neither is she. Well, I get that, but none of us are regular persons. I know, but some people have earned greater abilities and talents through their deeds. I get that, but... <laughs> okay, she's probably most likely a really good fit for me. 
I don't want to talk about it. I'm pissed. <laughs> I'm human. You guys give me five minutes to be freaking human. Maria, I'm... Look. Look, Hendrix. I'm not... You're not funny. Look, it's not... I'm not going to be sorry. <laughs> Shut up. God, I, I love you. You know we have better conversations on the phone and in person than we do that spiritually or telekinetically. You are way more obnoxious. You have like a... Yeah, you're like a spiritual obnoxious person. <laughs> She's so sweet, little brown. It's like, have you ever seen um, uh, Shrek? Yeah, your husband's got it right. You're like freaking Puss in Boots with the whole, you know, with the little eyes and everything, like, oh, you know, and all of a sudden it's like, Rah! oh, gosh, help. Rah! Yeah, you're like Puss in Boots. Yeah, that's who you're like. You're like a female Puss in Boots. Your husband's got you. He's nailed you right on the... He's nailed you. <laughs> well, yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> it's obviously, at least twice, you've got two kids. <laughs> That's funny. But no, it's... <laughs> oh, I'm in trouble. It's... Oh, dude, man, I'm sorry. That was funny, though. Okay, sorry. Okay. See, yeah. He's got kind of like a little magic way with you. He can get away with it. He's a sweetheart. God, he's so handsome. He's so cool. I love your husband so much. I think I love him more than I like you because you're so mean. <laughs> Just kidding. Why do you keep telling me I'm going to regret it? What, what is, what's so special about her? What about me? Why do you always got to pick on Moses? Why do you always got to pick on me? Because you need it. Every once in a while, you just need that. I don't know. I'm... Yeah, you're my ego check. You're my ego check sister. You're you're my perfect. E She's yeah, little old puss in boots. Yeah, you okay? Yeah, yeah. Welcome to stop. Shut up. <laughs> okay. Welcome to his world. Um, hi. Like he doesn't ego check you exactly, and she needs me as an ego check, doesn't she? Yeah, because I'm the best ego checker for her. Because I'm sweet. I'm doing it. I'm a sweet. I'm Ralph's nicey. Yeah. He is, but he can kick the crap out of you if you turn into a cocky little self-indulgent brat. I'm not going to be sorry. I'm, I'm not, no, I, I understand completely what she's been through. I'm going to cry a lot. Oh, boo, freaking who? <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, okay. Did you forget to, did you mean she's already cried about, the, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> she, she's cried for Ralphie for all the rough things Ralphie's been through. <laughs> old suffered sweeter for me. Yeah, I'm old. I'm I'm just the old Joan Baez song person. Yeah, I, I, I'm John the Messiah and Jesus. And I guess you cry for me. I guess that's that's cryable. There's a lot of kind of cryable stuff and the things I've done in here haven't been too bad either with your children and having to suffer the indignities. And well, other, what about the little girls? You risk everything to, but I really haven't. I mean, well, no, that would be ludicrous to go out there in the streets and have myself murdered. That's just stupid. That's not going to get anything done. It just cause a little media frenzy. I get it, sis. Well, I want to, because it's frustrating. I mean, I don't want to, but sometimes you can't help it. I see what Al's talking about. You know, I'd rather die than see another kill. Peaceful wishes, so we're still thinking in this battlefield. Say, this is bliss. I believe that shit. You know, I don't still smoke the weed. I, I never smoke the weed. <laughs> what I'm doing to myself, I just don't know. What I do to poor God asking where my children go. Where'd they go? I was asking that tonight, man. I was asking God, I was watching the movie and sitting there playing with the ball of boys my Noah. And thinking about love, I felt like such an immature little schoolboy. Here you are, thoughts of love. And the actual planet in itself is still at risk and they're not doing anything about it. And you're worried about, am I going to get a date to prom? <laughs> Just kidding. But that's what I felt like, man. I'm like sitting there throwing the ball up in the air, catching it, going... I miss my boy. You know, I felt like freaking, you know, uh, Paul Simon, where's my wife and family? What if I die here? <laughs> Who'll be my role model? Now that my role model is gone, gone. He dug back down that, you know, I'm feeling like that. And I'm like, God dang, I feel immature. Why am I worried about, why am I thinking about things of 
love. I'm watching Judah with her and the ring and the slavery on her finger, and I'm looking at my hands and intertwining my hands, saying, why don't why do I have to hold my own hand? Why don't I have a beautiful hand to put my hands in? What, what have I done so wrong to be treated so cruelly that I'm laying here alone watching a movie, throwing my son's baseball up in the air, missing my children, missing the one that would bring me love? What, why, what have I done to deserve this? You know, why do they treat me so thoughtlessly and so cruelly when all I've tried to do is help save them from inhumanity, insanity, and stupidity? And, and I, I know I make them feel that way, and I don't mean to, but I'm pointing it out to them, and I'm not putting the deeds together from them, not incurring the stupidity and, and perpetuating the violence on ourselves and on our own planet. Why do they hate me? Why am I alone? Why can't I have her soft hands in mine? Why am I not lame beside a woman that I love? Why can't I have my kids come in and cuddle me? Why are they so vicious and cruel? And then they want to earn the rewards of the one that is sitting there tortured and alone. And they want his talents. They want his children. They want his wife. And they want his place at the table. But if we all get a place at the table because he's forgiving, then I'm not mad at me for forgiving you in 15 minutes after torturing me for three years. I'm pretty happy at me because I want to teach it to you. I love you too. Blessings and peace.